guys, my name is Juan Carlos Pena. I am a student here at Jones Technical Institute in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, today's video, we're going to be connecting our Bosch ESI Tronic 2.0 uh, wireless controller to our data link. Uh, before we uh, connect this test, we have already checked that our batteries are at proper voltage. They are at 12.6 right now. Uh, we've already checked our data link connector itself to ensure that uh, the ohmage was within spec. We've also walked around the engine bay and checked the harness and um, the ECU, make sure all the plugs and connectors on sensors are okay and we checked for frays in our wires and stuff, okay? So, next we're gonna be, first thing we're gonna be turning our key over to accessory mode, okay? Then we're going to take our connector, just connect right into the J1939 here. A little can. Oh, yeah. All right. And I've already got the software opened up. All you do is hit the connect and scan vehicle. Very simple software to use uh, and very, uh, very in-depth, actually. You can do a lot of things on here. You can do a chuff test to check your ABS modules or modulators, I'm sorry. Uh, you can do a cylinder cutout test. You can do um, wheel speed sensor tests, all kinds of stuff. So it's showing here that the VIN is uh, in the wrong format. I've got it manually written here, so we're gonna pause right now and uh, we'll get this typed in. Okay, so uh, we have typed in our VIN. We got this opened up on the home screen here. Uh, we've got the systems listed on here. We can do some of these common tests. Like I said, you got the ABS modulators test, the chuff test, checking your wheel speed sensors, compression test, pretty good. A lot of information, a lot of tests you can do here. Uh, what we are focusing on is reading our faults. See if we've got some codes on here. Okay. So now it's, uh, oh, look at this. We got something. We've got one code it looks like, um, maybe in our ABS system, SID 231 FMI 14, okay. This is an active fault. Now over here also it keeps a history of past faults in the ECU. These are inactive faults. These are faults that happened but cleared for whatever reason. Maybe uh, an electrical issue somewhere along the line. Um, yeah, it, it's got to be. These are both. Uh, these are both electrical problems. So uh, we'd have to check that wiring. It's, it's just something that has that popped up before. It's good now, but it's something that we should probably pay attention to. Okay. So what we want is this actual fault. Okay. And then it takes us straight into general troubleshooting information. This is perfect for a technician. Uh, it gives you a direct line to the most likely cause of problems uh, that you're getting your check engine code for. So what we're going to do next is uh, break down that code for us, okay? This fault info. It's a control unit. Uh -huh. so we're going to go back to our home menu. And then we're going to break down this code. But I'm just going to do that in front of the camera. I'm not going to be working with this computer too much more for the rest of this video. Computer to uh, better understand the fault code that we had, even though the Bosch system did a really good job of giving us very uh, good general troubleshooting tips, told us it was somewhere in the brake system. Uh, we opened up ProDemand, we couldn't really locate the faults under the engine fault or the fault code index, I'm sorry. Uh, so we pulled up this uh, Bendix technical manual here, the troubleshooting guide, and we actually found uh, over our connector, it was a cruise signal error. Okay, so that just means that somewhere along the line, there's um, most likely an, an, uh, an open in our wiring somewhere. But it does show us this really good uh, picture of a diagram of how things are set up in our vehicle. Okay, you have your, your central processing unit, your engine ECM is connected in line with the terminating resistors which are also tied in line with the battery, which is the reason why you've got to disconnect it before you test your data link um, connection, okay? So 
it's got also on this uh, it's got the specific procedures so you can go down to correcting this fault to investigate this fault um, it basically telling you to check the pinouts and see where you're getting the, the extra resistance along the way or if you're not getting enough voltage uh, but you know th we're not going to go into the actual um, fixing of the fault this was a video basically on showing how to connect and use the diagnostic equipment that would typically be in a shop um, another very common and helpful software is drought test um, there's another ones out there like ProLink and um, there's even universal ones out there uh, it's just real important to get into the software and use it the more that you use it the better you're going to be with it okay so that concludes this video thank you for watching